obviously Rob Howdle. Um, what is it you're involved in and how have you ended up part of the, the web design team? I got involved with it mostly because I just wanted to do something. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I, I started working within the website and software development industry. Um, and from there, I enjoyed just doing various different, uh, diff different personal projects. And I figured there's plenty of stuff that could be done. It was just a case of actually picking one and going for it. Yeah. You know. So was that the, the uh, one where you the, the PDF guide where you pulled a lot of uh, all the links and the information together on basically how to be a, a droid builder? Was that one of your first projects or? Yes. So that was something that I did before I actually formed the web team. And it's something that I've carried on doing uh, throughout this is the new builder guides. That's essentially just a, it, it, it started off originally, it was just going to be the one guide, but it got so well received that I actually started just keep to keep going because um, people seem to enjoy it and all, all they are essentially is exactly what it says on the tin it's it's supposed to be just a guide for new builders you know new builders should be able to read that guide and get as much information as they can yeah and obviously with joy with joy building there is it, it's it's an entire rabbit hole of information you know you, you can you can start reading information about a dome and then six months later you're still reading that same information just because there's so much of it so so the point of the guides is they they, they try and give a, a very clean and brief overview of as much as possible really and give you a good taste of everything so the builder can then make their own decisions on what they want to do what materials they want to use and whatnot and uh, yeah, i've certainly pointed to quite a few of the people who do the uh, the styling kits in the direction of uh, of that because obviously it elaborates on where whereas they're starting off with a styling kit uh, you've got a more whole multitude of other things that you've then got to consider with regards to the dome the greeblies that you're adding how you're going to get it thrived um, and it is it is a very good guide for uh, someone to um, take away read through and uh, then build on once they've actually got a little bit more information to to understand what they want to do with the build um, but there's a there's a whole team of you that you've pulled together uh, who else is part of the uh, web development team we we purposely kept the team small to start with because we didn't want to just drag loads and loads and loads of people in and then it not go anywhere and not having enough projects to do and whatnot um and that whole thing of too many cooks for the broth sort of thing so we started off with a, a small team we've got um JD Parr, who's uh, been a member of the club for quite a while. He does uh, various types of programming and he, he's actually a teacher in, uh, in programming and whatnot. Wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, very clever. Uh, we've got uh, the UK's committee's own Darren Olson, who is on. Darren obviously does, uh, he's a system administrator for his daytime job. Uh, very clever. Again, he, he really knows his stuff and uh, he was really happy to jump in and um, so was more than happy to have him involved with that. Uh, we've got Matthew Goodliffe, I, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I've never actually asked him how you pronounce his, uh, his surname, but again, he's, he's been involved with the club for many years. And again, he does uh, a lot of software. He, he, just, he just comes up with some really fantastic ideas yeah. for the projects that we're doing. Um, and then we've got, of course, Mr. Steely Smith who most people will know on the, who's uh, part of the Americans and their side of things. Uh, he's quite a big thing in the, in the club. Everyone knows Steely. He's released, I believe, just released actually, um, a new app for Droid Builders, which has been submitted to all the app stores and whatnot, yeah. which is um, really, really good. I've uh, me and the team have beta tested that and it's very good. Excellent, yeah. I saw I saw the announcement on, I'm not sure if it was on .net or the, or the global R2 Builders Club, club saying that it had been, uh, been, been submitted, so I was wondering whether you was uh, going to be able to elaborate on that or whether it was going to still be a bit um, push push secret. Well, well I, uh, I I did actually speak to Dilly because the, uh, that was something that Silly was working on before he actually got involved with the team and whatnot, and uh, that, seems to, uh, that seems to be working out in his favour, hopefully. Um, he did give me a nice uh, description of it. He, he said it's a method of engagement for builders, allowing them to showcase themselves as well as their droids. Right. Events can be created and builders and droids can be assigned to them. Like I said, me and the team have uh, beta tested the app and I, it, it's very fun. Sounds like a topic for the next discussion is a, an actual walkthrough once it's been released and everyone's had a, a chance to play with it. Is that predominantly going to be US based or is it, is it intended for global use or? 
Uh, I believe that the the, the Droid Builders app that Steam has released uh, is going to be a global thing. I think currently the ones that are on there may be tailored to maybe like the the guys over in the the, the US, but I believe once it's uh, once it's out in the open, it's it's going to be a, a worldwide thing. Yeah. So again, one of the, I think one of the big things that you've been involved in is the uh, is the Droid Wiki. Obviously, um, having built uh, BB8s and uh, assorted droids yourself, you, you tend to be heading off all over the internet trying to find mm -hmm. what's the what's the forum, what's the wiki that's for it. Yeah. Um, obviously, everyone knows asterisk.net, um, but yeah. trying to pull all that together, that, that seems to have been quite a, a sizable task, really. It was, yeah. Um, it was something that I, I, w I wanted to do for a while. Um, now, the, the biggest question that we get asked whenever we mention the Droid Wiki is, do you mean the Astromech Wiki? Uh, or are you like trying to get rid of the Astromech wiki? And the, 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 the simplest answer is no. All the, all the central droid wiki is, it's just a single wiki with all of the other droid groups in one place. So it means that you don't have to go to the BB-8 Builders Facebook group to then be redirected to the BB-8 forum to then find the BB-8 wiki. The same with donk droids, T3s, T7s, Astromechs, uh, pilot droids, all sorts, you know, it's it's a single instance of all the groups. You know, the whole point of the wiki was everybody gets put on the same platform, yeah. everybody gets the same amount of exposure, and it, it just it equals the playing field for everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was a, a risky move trying to make that happen because obviously we, uh, we, we didn't want to overshadow Astromech. We didn't want it to seem as if we were taking things away from there or away from the forum. So... Everything we did, we asked permission for. You know, we asked, we want to do this. Is it okay? This is the reason we want to do it. We gave all this stuff off. And everybody was uh, really cool about it. Yeah. You know, we didn't have anybody who didn't want to get involved. Yeah. We had a couple of people who unfortunately didn't respond back, which is why they might seem like there's a, a couple of groups missing. But we're constantly adding to the wiki. And like I say, it's just one place where you can just go find what you want. Yeah. You know, um, and so far, it's been very well received. Everyone's been really happy with it. Um, obviously, everyone's making suggestions on ways we can improve it, ways we can make information easier for people to uh, for people to access and whatnot. And as the suggestions come in, if they're uh, if they're good suggestions and they can help, then we'll add them in. You know, and that's one of the best things about is about it is the fact that we're constantly adding to it. It's not a case of it's done, it's there, it's never going to be touched again. Mm -hmm. It's something we're constantly adding on and. Always adding new groups to, always updating information. So, uh, if somebody did want to suggest something or get in touch with members of the web team, um, what's the best uh, method to do that? So, so far we have got a Joy Builder Web Team Facebook page, and mm -hmm. if you just search Joy Builder Web Team in Facebook, we come up. Uh, we've got a rather unique um, icon of uh, a nice R two D two in programming code that uh, our dear Matthew came up with. Uh, they can email us at Joy Builder Web Team at gmail.com. Uh, mm -hmm. We currently have a website in development. It's just we had so many projects that our own website kind of took a back burner. Um, and we're going to have all sorts of stuff on there, you know, where people can report bugs and with any of the applications that we make. Uh, and currently, those are the two ways they get in touch with us, although most people end up messaging me personally, which, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't mind. <laughs> One of the other things I had spotted was uh, obviously there's the, uh, I think, working with Michael Badley on the, uh, the printed parts checklist. Uh, that, yes, that's a very significant, significant bit of work and um, very impressive to say the least. Uh, where are you with um, regards to that? Well, I can announce that as of I can find the exact uh, the exact time here. You know, this uh, super professional. As of eight hours ago, right. we have now completely finished, and uh, there's there's actually a guy who have. Uh, accidentally completely forgot off the list uh, that's Patrick Ryan who's uh, part of the team now as well he's something that he wanted to join in with and he's actually done a lot of work on the checklist as well so yeah. sorry Patrick <laughs> and the launch date is set for the 1st of November which is actually this coming Sunday do you think there's any um, plans to expand it so that it covered the likes of the, the more um, styrene or aluminium build droids or uh, I can confirm that we do have a plan been, right. which will open it up for styrene droids, wooden droids, aluminium droids, 
basically everything else. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be two different versions. Mm -hmm. We then want to open that out again, just, just like we have with Michael's, where it's not just R2-D2. We're going to have that for every droid. You know, yeah. R2s, BB-8s, T3s. Any droid that people are building, we'll stick it on. What is the biggest issues that you have actually found by collaborating with uh, all the different builders or um, all the different styles of information that's actually out there? Yeah, I mean, the we, we've hit various types of issues with everything that we've done, and each, each project brings its own problems as such. Um, and the, the the best thing about them is the fact that it's it's a it's a great opportunity for us to learn. You know, I mean, a lot of the things that I that we're doing within the team I've either never done before or it's stuff that I've got to go away and learn um, and the same same with the other guys you know there's plenty of things that have been brought to the table that everyone else has never heard of they've never experimented with and uh, there's Darren is an, a perfect example of that you know there's things that we've brought to the table that he's never thought of and he's gone and he's reworked some of his original stuff to incorporate this new the new stuff that we've done, so even just things like programming languages, you know, trying it in another language has opened up to a whole world of possibilities. Yeah. So there's a lot of positives that come out, but some of the some of the challenging aspects has been when people on the team aren't fluent in certain languages. Yeah. So for example, we might program in this language, but there might be three of us who have never programmed in this language before, which it's then a learning curve for them. But then we need to think, is there a more common ground that we can uh, that we can go in that'll still provide everything that we want yeah. um and there's, yeah there's, there's a lot of learning curves i mean in terms of actually getting information and whatnot i mean we can take the uh, central droid wiki as an example it was challenging getting the other groups to actually get involved with it obviously i anyone who is an admin of a droid builders group if they check the messages and haven't already responded they had a huge essay of a paragraph from me trying to uh, convince them to get involved with this and uh, everyone did and the, the main thing with that is we as a web team weren't doing the work yeah. we gave them the platform as in the wiki but it was down to the admins of the groups and whoever they chose to get involved with it to actually put that information out there yeah. so obviously you you've you've got the issue of people have obviously very busy um, and especially at the moment people have all over the place with uh, lockdowns and whatnot and work and everything so people are really busy getting that information there was a challenge um and obviously we, we were on hand to, to help and whatnot so there's yeah there's there's various issues with everything that we've done um but uh, it's it's stuff that we've eventually overcome uh, yeah. i mean michael's for example was uh, actually getting all of his files you know if, if in fact if it hadn't actually been for uh Mr. Part, it probably wouldn't be done now because we'd have to be manually typing through every single part, piece right. by piece, in every single folder. Um, and there's there's a lot, <laughs> especially for that R2 Mark II. Yeah. Uh, I believe there was maybe, I think, about 400 parts. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, Doug had actually created something that did all that work for us right. and create a nice little file with it all in and. Uh, well, once people are actually on there, there's, there's a nice part that counts how many parts there is. And the, people will be amazed how many parts are in these builds. Is there any plans to add the, uh, the pit droids? Or? The biggest issue that we've got is the fact that they're, they're all with different people. You would like to find a way to uh, bring them all in. Anyone who creates files yeah. has, has, has the opportunity to come in. And at the end of the day, that's what the community is. I think that's a quite a good little roundup of uh, what the web team's actually up to. Um, unless you've got anything else you can share with us, it's probably best that I don't say anything about this. But I, I could totally tease it. Is um, we are in discussions with a large part of the droid building community, and uh, there's there's something that we hope to be announcing very soon. That's going to be uh, a huge thing for the web team, and and uh, guys are really excited to work on it obviously i've already told the web team what it is but uh we we weren't able to actually agree on whether i could uh say it so we'll we'll, we'll just leave it with that little teaser there but hopefully there's uh, going to be a large announcement coming shortly excellent with what we're involved in well i say it's uh it's much appreciated the time that you guys are actually like putting into it because i know quite often a lot of these things are, are what is going on uh, in the background and we only really see the front end um, well, thanks for the Brilliant. interview and uh, the, the insights into the web team. Indeed. Thank you very much. Cheers.